Do I want to wear a hat or no hat? Backwards hat, maybe? We're going no hat. You know, this wasn't supposed to be my next video. I was actually, I'm in the middle right now of recording a vlog. I recorded half of it. it has to do with uh, something with the PC there. And then I got sick. And now I'm finally recovering from sickness, but I wanted to make this video on this day, so the vlog will have to be next video. And side note, this wall behind me. Oh, who put that there? I think it about ship lapping. I like the idea of having the wood go across or maybe even vertical. Huh, I just thought of that. I'm just tired of having a white wall, white wall, white trim. It's very bright in here. I even brightened up this desk right in front of me. This is still black. That's white. I need a little bit of contrast here, so I think it would be nice to have a dark shiplap wall behind me. I can hang stuff up. The only thing is that my wife has been asking me to shiplap a living room wall for ever since we got into this house, so I'd have to do that too. And for those of you who watched my Why I Quit Coding video but didn't watch it all the way till the end, I specified at the end that the reason I'm comfortable making this video right now is because I am coding my own projects again. I didn't want to make it when I wasn't coding, I just I felt weird, I felt like a failure because I wasn't coding on my own, even though I was coding all day at work. But I shift a few things around to the point where I'm making time at least a couple hours a week to work on my own projects. That way I can make a few videos going over coding my own projects. And by projects, I just mean one project. I've been coding it up, having a lot of fun doing it, and when I, whenever I get done with it, I'll make a video about it. And I'm also, as we speak, working on my secret business. And in the next video, the vlog, y'all will hear about why it's taken a little bit longer than I first anticipated, how everything got flipped on its head, and how I had to correct it. So that'll be a fun little story time. But coding, when it comes to coding, everybody always wants to talk about the same topics in terms of, you know, what language do I use if I want to build this? What IDE do I use if I use that language? How to use the IDE? What about the basics of programming? Things of that nature, which that's very good to learn, but what about the few little things that nobody really talks about and you don't really think about until you're actually working? A few of those are what I like to talk about in this video, starting off with playing with your code. I find playing with your code incredibly important because whenever somebody comes in, they're learning code or they're coding, they wanna do it very strict by the book. They follow the tutorials to the T. They follow the samples to the T. They integrate these samples into their code as best as they can perfectly. But the best way to learn is when you start getting creative, when you start working on things on your own, adding features or messing with the code to figure out what little things do. Like when you're taking a tutorial, for example, instead of watching a video or reading an article and doing exactly what they do and how they do it and then moving on to the next chapter or the next tutorial, why don't you do it like they do it, hop back into the code and then add a feature or change the UI or change the code a little bit. Maybe you made something green and you wanna make it blue. Just hop in there and play with your code because you actually learn what each little thing does. You can do a for loop all day, but if you change up that for loop a little bit, hey, you actually realize, oh, maybe I should keep the for loop like that because if I change it a little bit this way, if I change the number from eight to 12, it doesn't actually give me the desired result. That's just a simple example that I give, but that's the basis of it. My cousin, who's actually a web designer, he learned web design back in, if I'm not mistaken, the early 2000s, where he wasn't able to go on YouTube or go on Skillshare and learn whatever he needed to learn. This is what he actually did. He went on to a website. He would right click, view page source, and just change things right there within the web page. He'd say, oh, what does this little uh, hex code do? He didn't know it was called a hex code, but he changed it up a little bit. Oh, that changes the colors. What about if I change this little bit of HTML up here or CSS down here? Oh, that changed the box? That changed the position? And he just, that's literally how he learned how to design websites. And people would come to him in the 2000s, early 2000s, and pay him to build them websites from him just going in, right click, view page source, and learning it tinkering with it, if you will. And if you're not in the tutorial stage or you're not really in the basic learning stage, because after all, we are always learning, the sample code that you look at on Stack Overflow or in a particular documentation or a guide that you need to figure out this particular problem, you need to run the code and tinker with it. So you can use a site like uh, Plunker. I think that's only web-based stuff like Angular or HTML, CSS, I'm not 100% sure, or CodeChef just some type of online IDE or text editor that'll actually show you what the code does. Think of Playground and, and Xcode, similar to that, but web-based. 
and you're able to play with that little snippet of code. So that's a little coding trick or thought number one is play with your code, tinker with it, run it, use it or lose it. That's kind of how it works. If you're not gonna use it, not gonna actually learn, understand how this code works, you're never gonna use it again because you don't know how it actually works. I mentioned Skillshare when I was talking about tutorials because while they have over 23,000 classes in terms of business, marketing, photo, video, and much more, one of those much more sections is technology. Where if you're interested in web development, they have many courses in terms of full stack development, HTML basics, JavaScript essentials, and on top of that, they also have things in the realm of data science or artificial intelligence and machine learning. A lot of different technology courses that I think y'all really like. And if you use the link at the top of the description, you're able to get two months of Skillshare Skillshare Premium for free. And something to note is that a lot of these courses you're able to finish within that two month free period if you actually dedicate your time, do a little bit of time boxing like we talked about in a previous video, and actually dedicate yourself to learning something. Because you're not just going to take a course, watch a few videos, maybe type up a little bit of code, and think you're going to be an expert programmer. You need to dedicate the time to it. And this is a good start in the right direction if you're interested in learning a new technology or learning something in terms of freelancing because maybe you have the technology down pat and you just need to learn how to market yourself, run a business, or do freelancing. Now something else you should probably be doing weekly if not daily is refactoring your code. Because if you don't refactor your code on a regular basis, your code probably isn't in good health. And it's easy to say, hey, you should refactor your code, but how do you actually go about it? How do you find the problems in your code or little things that make your code more readable to actually refactor what needs to be refactored. And a few ways to go about that are some type of linter, like I think that's what it's called. TS Lint is an extension that I would install in Visual Studio Code, whereas TS stands for TypeScript or Sonar Lint. That's what I installed in Eclipse. That was for Java is what I used it for. Not sure the expandability of that particular linter. I'm gonna look that up. Okay, yeah, I was right. It is called Lint or Linter. It's a tool that analyzes source code to flag programming errors, bugs, stylistic errors, and suspicious constructs. And these linters, they know what is coding standard. So for example, Sonar Lint is Java. So if you're using a Lambda expression and you're using Java 8, Java 8 introduced the method reference and it'll say, hey, you should probably use this method reference instead of the Lambda expression because the Lambda expression in many instances is just it's deprecated and you want to use a method reference because it makes your code easier to read and this is the new standard. So if you're using Java 8 and you install Sonar Lint on Eclipse or IntelliJ or whatever other Java IDE you use, it'll say, hey, you should probably use a method reference here instead because of this is why, it'll explain the reasoning, so on and so forth, and that is the overall idea of, of these linters that you can use that'll tell you, hey, you should refactor your code here. Another way to find some code to refactor is that if you're looking at a function or a method where you can't see the top or the bottom in your IDE or text editor, you should probably refactor that into multiple smaller functions or methods. Rule of thumb is, you know, you don't want it longer than 20 to 25 lines worth, but my visual cue is that if I have to scroll down within the same method or function, it should probably be refactored. Or if you see yourself using a nested loop, you may be doing some resource intensive processing without even realizing it. And if that's the case, you should probably rethink the logic within all of that. If you have two nested loops, okay, then then maybe that's fine, but you know, three is just, it's just bad. So consider, consider rethinking that logic you use in those nested loops to find something that's a little bit more feasible, something more efficient. And if your method or function has a name that is longer than 20 characters, you should probably rethink that name or rethink the method and function per what we were talking about before. Because if you have a name that is longer than 20 characters and it's an accurate name, then maybe you're doing a little bit too much in that particular method or function and you could split it up into multiple smaller ones. And if you find that's not the case, then you could probably find a name that is more suitable and more condensed than a 20 character, 25 character name. And that brings us to our next little coding trick or, or thought, and that is use meaningful names. And as, as common as this sounds, <laughs> you'd be surprised. A lot of people don't tend to use names that are as accurate as I would prefer. Maybe they saw it a different way and they it really worked for them, but having someone else read your code will really, really expose you to hey, maybe this wasn't the best name or maybe this wasn't the best logic and the name needs to be meaningful because if you're using it in a different part of your code you need to look at the name and understand what is going on in that method or function without actually going to that method or function maybe you hover over it and you have some java docs there and it explains it a little bit more that's always good to have java docs but you want that name to be for the most part self-explanatory sorry i'm getting a little worked up here but I've come across some really bad names. <laughs> 
And th this is anything from variable names, function names, method names, class names, everything. Everything you name, it needs to make sense. And whatever that may be that you're naming, class, interface, variable, method, you should use that appropriate naming convention for whatever language you're using. So Java has naming conventions for different, a little bit different from classes and interfaces than it is for methods and it is for variables. So look into your regular naming conventions for whatever language you're using. That way you can follow the coding standards for it as well as make names that make sense. And there are a lot of these little coding tricks or thoughts that I have all the time. I just don't want to fill all of them into an entire video or else this video will be eight hours long and rather make a lot of smaller videos and one really giant video that nobody will watch all the way through. So if you want more videos with these little programming tricks or thoughts, whatever it may be that I have and want to compile them into a particular video, stuff that people don't typically like to highlight but are very important on a day-to-day -day coding basis, let me know in the comment section below. If you did like the video, be sure to like it, subscribe for more videos like this, and until next time. I like, that was a good video. I like that.